Hello, PlayStation planners, players, and pure geniuses. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're not going to be going over anything super specific. Just some uh, detailing of a neighborhood that I put together shortly after building this park here. Um, had a bit of a system crash with my PlayStation. Lost a bunch of my footage that I was trying to put together. Which was why the last video was more or less a compilation of clips from my cities that I've been working on. Um, because the video that I was working on, showing off downtown and this park and this zoo, is gone. But anyways, on a brighter note, we're back on track. Thanks for tuning in again, everybody. So right now, I'm going through and just putting in some details for this neighborhood. Just some random tree clusters, some bushes, a handful of rocks. Um, just kind of liven up a little bit of that empty space there between the main roads and the houses. And, you know, just looks a little bit better planned that way. This neighborhood had a lack of pathways, which was a new thing for Poncho. Poncho is known for its walkability, and this neighborhood had none. So that'll be one of the interesting features to this neighborhood that makes it different from the rest. Here's a good overshot. Looking good there. Looking real good. And that's what the, uh, I believe that was the mid-century modern housing now we're going to go through and put some details in on this zoo. Um, because the footage for making this zoo was lost, I did decide to come through and uh, just kind of show it off a little bit after we're done with these little details here. Kind of an interesting project. I've only built one zoo before ever in City Skylines, and... Uh, it was shortly after I first started playing in 2019. Might have even been 2020. It was around the time when COVID started. And uh, I discovered City Skylines on YouTube. But I, uh, I started a city with everything unlocked and all the DLCs that were currently out at the time and just kind of went to town putting everything in there. All the industries, all the parks, all the colleges the works. So this is my first zoo on a uh, regular city with milestones and everything and uh, I think it turned out pretty good. I did look a lot at the Pueblo Zoo down in Colorado on Google Maps some inspiration on location in the city and also sort of for the layout um, I did kind of have a central access point with a main road cutting through the middle of it with kind of a sky rise to get across to both sides along with entrances to the park on both sides there's also a bus station and metro access and yes, we did add a metro off screen as well. Um, the beginning of Poncho 4, there was a metro station there next to the bus station in the intro, but I hadn't connected it to anything yet. I simply put it there because I knew I was going to have a metro, and I figured it was better to just use the space instead of trying to make it later. Here's our zoo, kind of off the river a little ways. I wanted to have some green space between the river and the zoo, but also keep the zoo in an area that's kind of off the side of the city. You know, there's not a whole lot of busyness going on around it for the most part. Uh, there's a uh, pedestrian community that parallels it there, kind of separating it from the main road. Yeah, 
turned out pretty good. I also added some more city park services. There's some baseball fields that I custom made over here. I'm not gonna lie, I was, uh, I was pretty proud of these. I spent a good amount of time. I love baseball. Love it. It's like my sport. Go Red Sox. Yeah, I was really proud of these baseball parks. They turned out really good considering I just kind of uh, rigged them up. I did have some inspiration on some parts of it, but a lot of it was uh, really my own ingenuity on this one. If there is someone who's built them similar to this fashion, I promise I'm not taking your credit. Um, I haven't seen a whole lot of examples of how to build a baseball park exactly, but I've seen other fields like you'll see in a minute. Uh, other people who put out content for City Skylines make little parks like this. Uh, here we go. This one's actually on fire, but those are, you know, two soccer fields, two football fields, a little bit of a concessions area there. I'm sure that layout, the uh, football fields looks familiar to other YouTube videos we've seen, and I give credit where it's due, and uh, thank you for the inspiration. So this is Poncho. After all the stuff we've missed out on, there is a massive mine, open pit mine going on over there to the right. That's a new thing that I put in. Um, I think I have some of the footage for that left over that I'm going to try and squeeze in later. Um, because that was a whole other project all on its own. It was like building its own city. Um, it needed so much attention. Um, we built our downtown. Got a good bit of city parks here and a hospital area. Um, now we're going to get ready to jump in on uh, building a fire department because with all these trees that I've added in the desert Poncho keeps catching on fire and here we are another milestone 36,000 didn't bother to scroll through and see what I unlocked I guess it must not have been too important when I was letting it record at the time or I was dealing with my children it was one of the two 36,000. This city has grown, let me tell you. It's only been three months, but uh, I don't normally get a lot of time to dive in on this stuff, so. Fire station time. Some heavy metal fire station music. We're going to add in a high capacity fire station because it sits right here between two industry areas. And then we're also going to add a fire helicopter depot. These wildfires in the middle of town are uh, making it a little bit hard to do business and making it hard to have great quality looking videos when the city is burning down. I did try to mix up the music a little bit. Uh, I've been trying to stay away from the metal stuff because heavy metal and city skylines I felt like would mix like oil and water, but seeing as how I don't see anybody else doing it, maybe it's the one piece of uniqueness I need for my channel to shine in the City Skylines community. Let me know in the comments. I can keep it coming. So these roads here, when I originally built the open pit mine, housed a lot of the, what would I call them, like the refineries, the processing units for the raw material. I placed them here. They were having a lot of trouble with highway access and the area itself was just too cramped for the operation I was trying to run. So I wound up relocating them to within the vicinity of the mine. And uh, which left this nice little grid here for me to put in higher density fire protection to save the city of Poncho from its flaming self. That's right across the way from the gas station here. I did put in a gas station. Um, it's been involved in a couple of the intro shorts, I'm sure. But, uh, 
Yeah, so as you can see downtown, I did build downtown and put some of the skyscrapers from the new skyscrapers content content creator packs in there, but uh holy man they are expensive to run. So uh I didn't want to quite go and undo all of that money that my city spent, so instead we pulled what a lot of big money makers are doing right now and we built them and we're not letting anybody use them just to add to the realism of this modern city huh hope you guys get a kick out of that one moving right along here though all right we're gonna get into some transit this is my hospital area slash disaster response slash police headquarters. There's a hospital helicopter station here along with a high capacity hospital, elder care, and child care. There's a lot of uh, other things around too. I did put a clinic around there because in real life, clinics don't work as hospitals. Um they work as a separate purpose. So generally around hospitals you'll find things like clinics and smaller doctor practices because that's just the reality they don't work like parks and just raise land value they have a purpose so we did make a multi-level train station in downtown I'm sure I've showed off a little bit of that if not I will show it off here in a minute and that's going to receive all these lines running all over poncho that I uh, decided to make and lost the footage for another frustrating part there of uh the conundrums at Mad Battery Productions. But we're draining the swamp, I promise people. We're getting in the right folks to do the right job. Uh, more or less just the right brain cells to do the right thinking in my head. Because I'm naturally blonde and so with that has consequences. So you can see all these lines here. This kind of runs through the broad part of town. Um, the old town where we started. And uh, so I originally have a, uh, you can see kind of a higher density metro station there, but I decided that wasn't needed. I don't think I'm going to have enough lines going into this area to need that. But if in the future it turns out we do need it, we have the room prearranged for it. But this park has got to move. The needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. And this park can move over a grid square. I really love doing this. The whole walkability pathways. Um, everywhere I've lived, I've lived all over the country, we've had what we call, you know, green belts, um, which is like a. I'm sure a lot of you in larger cities know it's just a path that cuts. All the way through town a path network that cuts all the way through town um, you can get anywhere on it um, you know a lot of them lead to transit stations buses metros trains stuff like that um, and other people simply just walk and ride their bikes on them um, yeah so I try to have a lot of walkability a lot of this metro I also have a small bus network set up which we're going to add to in the downtown area here in a minute so the downtown has a main collector road that runs through it um, but then it also has a uh, I guess what you'd call a collector couplet um, which is where the collector splits into two one-way roads that run on opposing blocks parallel to each other to help move traffic through different parts of an area that has more capillary junctions is what we'll call them. I feel like that's appropriate. So you can kind of see some of my bus lines there running along. They just run through squares through the grid line um, they're just giant squares 
and they go back to these local stations similar to how I set it up in Palm Island if you guys have not watched Palm Island part 3 I go into a very very descripting I go into great detail talking about my transit systems and it's pretty much the same formula I've used here um, the difference with Poncho and Palm Island is Poncho is a lot more flat and laid out. Palm Island is centralized on that island, which limits the building capacity that you have. And that city's probably almost at maximum capacity. I don't know how much more we could do to that city. Maybe add a nature reserve on the mountain. Some kind of a mountaintop observatory. Who knows? Maybe we'll add a zoo over there or something. Or a tiny farming industry. So there's a good view of those fields there on the right. They're not all burnt up now. They actually look like a pleasant place to be. Although the grass is yellow, which where I live in Wyoming, most fields that we play on look like that anyways. We get about six weeks of green grass between May and June. It's just brown and windy here. And we love it, so we're the crazy ones. Here is my downtown transit hub. We have the multi-level train station. There's a bus station right next to it. Paths that lead all over downtown here. Tons of plazas and trees. Um, just a very, very walkable, accessible place. Even though it's high density, it's open enough that uh, you wouldn't feel suffocated walking around this part of town, I don't think. As you do in some places like, like New York, um, San Francisco. They're just very crowded places. They tried to put as much as they could. I mean, you got buildings that are butted right up to the sidewalk everywhere you go. Whereas you go to other larger cities, um, like Denver and stuff like that, there's a bit more plaza areas, especially around the capital and stuff like that. So this is that small bus station that runs over here to this local station which feeds, you know, the supermarket area, the old neighborhoods, old town. Now we're going to make a line that just runs through and through on this collector couplet in downtown. Yeah, so I'm going to make this line that uh, runs into the bus station here, and then I'm going to make one that runs reverse, but this one does not, or no, I don't make one that runs reverse, because it's a collector couplet. Oh, ah, only goes one direction. So yeah, that is adding on to our transit. Um, once a city reaches a certain point, I'd say 20,000 people, you have to have a decent system set up on how you're going to run your transit, how you're going to add to your city, so that way you can almost add sections like they're modular to your city. You want to just be able to plug things in, you know, leave open areas for you to add more transit. Make bigger stations than you plan on having, and then when you don't need them, downsize them. You know, um, you saw me do that with the bus line over there by the supermarket. Um, you know, just have those plans of modularity to where you can just plug into your city a whole new grid, and you're not having to add in a whole bunch of new amenities and stuff. Be ready for it, you know? It, a realistic approach to city planning, I would imagine. Uh, 
There we go. There's a good skyline view there running down the highway. Alright, so this is my other gas station. I have two gas stations. I have one downtown, and one over here, by across the highway from our shopping center. So I originally put in a bunch of gas pumps. Obviously, the demand was not high enough to have this amount of gas pumps. So I'm going to delete one side from both stations and turn it into kind of a homemade plaza area because all the plazas are too small. That's what's great about plazas and promenades. They give you all the materials and tools you need to make your own beautiful plazas. Really was a great DLC. Um, when I was first looking at the stuff for it when it was coming out, I was like, what? They're upgrading the path system? Yay. But uh, upon getting it and really going through all the stuff it came with, I love the pedestrian areas. Um, especially if you're doing like a European style city. There is definitely pedestrian areas in the United States. But I know in Europe, pedestrianized streets, especially in commercial areas, is a huge thing. They so encourage people to get out of their cars and walk and bike in Europe. Um, it's phenomenal. Um, and not just for the environment, but uh, even just for your social skills, you know? I mean, imagine walking around a group of people all the time. You're more likely to interact with people, whereas here in the States, we are headbanging to gangsta rap in our cars and stuff. So. It's just a different approach to life. I, myself included, I think would benefit from embracing something like that a bit more. But we all have a duty to the world. If we want change, we have to be verbal. And I'm probably not as verbal about it as I should be. So we're getting kind of close to the end here. Um, I know this video was more listening to me talk and just kind of do some quick fixes around the city um, after losing all that data it really kind of killed my motivation I almost uh, didn't want to make any more videos but uh, I, I really enjoy this outlet to show some of the things that I really enjoy doing in city skylines um, as a kid my grandpa built this huge train table in our basement and it was his city skylines you know he had these tiny little towns and I mean this thing ran gosh I mean it was a whole living rooms wall you know like two walls in a corner of a living room size space in his basement that he spent decades building you know 40 years it was so impressive and uh now that we have the technology, I can do this with a controller on my TV. If, uh, if my grandpa could see this now, oh, he would just be mind blown. This is my, this is my train table. This is my outlet. And the ability to share it with you guys is incredible. Um, in my grandparents' day and age, you had to bring someone down into his basement and show them. You know, video cameras were something that you held on your shoulder. And the tapes for it were as expensive as the camera. So uh, it didn't come out very much. Um, I hope you guys are really enjoying the content. I really enjoy uh, putting these builds together, putting these videos together, and just getting on and commentating, talking about the things I'm building and doing. I hope this gives you guys ideas to put into your builds. Uh, please use the ideas. Um, uh, don't take my advice on the music. Go. I'm limited in those selections. So, I mean, if this is what you're listening to, have at it, man. This is just kind of default with the video editor that I have. And it works. So. Here we are. 
Our gas stations are looking a little better. This one's got a motel, restaurant. The other one's just got a restaurant. Um, it's just kind of travel areas that you find along the interstate in cities, you know, hotels, gas stations, restaurants, you know. The places that we all stop at when traveling through the country and then say, I've been there. When all we've done is stop at their gas stations and eaten their food and never traveled to the inner city. Huh. I've done that. Like Wisconsin. I've been through Wisconsin. I hit like six gas stations through there. I can tell you all about it. So here's our skyline. It's really starting to come together. Uh, this side of town is pretty much finished. Now we're going to be working towards the other side of the interstate. Uh, definitely going to lean towards putting in an airport soon. A train station cargo hub for sure. And uh, definitely an amusement park. Gotta have them. Every city. Got to. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, I hope you all enjoyed sitting back and listening to me kind of commentate about all this stuff and my lousy political jokes. I hope you all take care. Please keep tuning in. Take these ideas to heart and uh, take care, everybody. <laughs>